So moving on, we have this overview of NDHCA. So what happens inside of NDHCA? Typically, in most of the OEMs, if you join as an NDH engineer, you'd observe that there is this CAD release. You get the CAD from the designers, and there'll be a modeling team so who make the mesh model, and they could also do the component level analysis, subsystem full vehicle analysis. You have a standard set of loads and boundary conditions. You perform model checks and the solving part. So this yellow box here, I put just to represent the different other inputs that goes into the model building process. There will be SCA correlation activities from a previous vehicle or a previous loop. So some important uh, lessons learned from previous uh, simulation activities, or previous testing activities that we would like to incorporate in the present loop. There will be material databases for most of companies have a material database where they maintain a list of materials, the material properties according to what they use, according to what they get from the suppliers. So all those information is used in the model building process. So, and over time, an OEM also develops modeling standards so that it becomes easier to compare. So just imagine when you have a standard process for modeling a car. So the results would not be influenced by your technique or your uh, modeling method. So to eliminate those differences, most OEMs gradually improve their modeling standards and try to follow those standards for every vehicle and every loop so that it becomes much easier and safer to compare between one vehicle and a previous old vehicle when you know that the modeling method is the same. So we start with the CAD, we mesh the model, we do analysis at different levels, at component level, subsystem level, full vehicle level. So you'd have component level targets. One interesting thing to uh, observe here is the component level targets are usually uh, throughout all departments are recognized as some frequency targets, mostly the structural targets I'm talking about here. So, for example, the door would have a target, say, of 47 hertz. Uh, the bumpers would have a target of minimum 20 hertz, and so on. So, you'll see that vibration gives a key insight into the design of all the components. So, if you ask a project engineer who takes care of, who makes sure that uh, all the components of the vehicle meet targets or not, he would be most interested in knowing the frequency, the eigen mode, the first eigen mode of any component. So that gives a good insight into how good the design is. So for example, if you bring me a door, which has a first mode at 20 Hertz or 25 Hertz, I would say, okay, uh, the design is not good. I don't even need to check it. So first achieve the minimum target frequency of 47 Hertz, and then we'll do the rest of the simulation. So if you look at, uh, at this small list of simulations, these are the basic standard simulations we perform in NVH. So Eigen modes is the basic one. If you're using the Nastron solver, it corresponds to the solution 103. So basically we compute the Eigen modes of the system and we have the modal frequency response analysis, the direct frequency response analysis, where we, for the modal frequency response analysis, we superpose the model results and we are able to derive the displacement, acceleration or velocity of any point or in our model. So in the same way, we have coupled acoustics. We can also understand the noise levels inside the cabin or inside any acoustic cavity for that matter which is called the NTF analysis or the noise transfer function. We have ERP or equivalent radiated power to understand the panel performance. We have panel contribution, acoustic analysis. We can understand the effect of panels. So sound cancellation by different panels, amplification. So these are very interesting subjects. So we can deep dive later on. So TPA is basically a transfer path analysis where we try to understand where the sound is coming from, where is it traveling through, so what can we do to uh, avoid the sound, avoid the noise from traveling, uh, or how do we prevent the noise from reaching the drivers or the passengers' ears. 
So we have statistical energy analysis next, SEA, which basically is related to high frequency phenomena. So in high frequencies, we need more statistical approaches rather than the deterministic approaches. So uh, after our CAE, after we do all this uh, solving post-processing, then we come up with the results and we compare those with our targets. So and, and most usually we find many of the metrics that we check are out of target. So, and then we start our countermeasure development. So we try to identify what can we do to solve those problems? How can we meet, how can we make all the metrics up to target? So what we do is we make changes in our finite element model and we run the simulation again to understand if we're meeting target, if we say add some stiffness somewhere, add mass somewhere, or remove some component, remove a part, what happens? So those kinds of activities help us come up with feedback to give to the design and we also deploy the countermeasures. So what the design does from our feedback, they improve the design according to what we tell them. And we have the next version of CAD or it could be the vehicle prototype as well. Moving on, just to highlight that if you're an MBH engineer, you would be well known across all the departments because an NVH engineer has the power to influence the design or the interface of any component in the vehicle. So you can imagine any component in the vehicle can potentially make noise or vibration issues. So as an NVH engineer, it gives you tremendous power to influence the design of anything in the car. So the, from these two diagrams, I took from a book called uh, Vehicle Refinement uh, from Zhu Yang. I can send you of the name of the book. It's, it's an essential read for any beginner in NPH. So if you see this Boolean charts, so what we have here is chassis and suspension is the sort. So that's represents uh, the chassis and suspension department, which is the body and frame, which is circle, and so on. So you'd see that the intersection of all the departments is what NVH is. So NVH simultaneously has an influence on every department. So the other picture tells you a similar story. Well, the solution that we develop in this product development process has to consider the NVH loop. So one basic fundamental that I wanted to include in this presentation is the source path receiver model. So when we are trying to model acoustic and vibration response virtually, that is in a computer model, or it could be a test model as well. So we can think of the sound, the physics of the sound transmission reception phenomena like a simple model. So we have the source, it could be an engine, an electric motor, it could be a fan, it could be raindrops on the roof of the car, it could be the road noise, it could be a lot of things, the source, and the path. The path could be the body of the vehicle, the air inside, the cushions, whatever the sound and vibration can travel through. And the receiver. The receiver is the human ear. So right here, it's, it becomes important to specify that there's something called subjectivity. So the quality of sound of a vehicle also depends on the person that is inside. So for a normal customer, Many things may not be noticeable, but for someone who is used to traveling only in luxury cars, if he sits inside a Datsun Go, he would be annoyed by the sound characteristics. He won't really enjoy it. I mean, this is a weak example. There can be many examples where people also have different abilities to hear different frequencies. So uh, keeping all these in mind, the receiver part also has some subjective element to it. So moving on, what we do with the transfer path analysis, previously when we didn't have powerful computers, we used to do everything through testing. So it used to take a lot of time. So what we do in transfer path analysis is we create a matrix of those source path receiver models. So you can have input forces, so F1, F2, F3, Fn. It could be road noise, it could be wind noise, it could be exhaust noise, and so on. 
it could be uh, fan, BH back, or, and whatever. So, and this travels through the car body through different parts. Some of the sound energy, vibration energy is traveling through the A pillar, something through the sill, through the acoustic cavity, and so on. And all of these would have, say, characteristics uh, which we can measure with velocity, acceleration, and displacement, whatever you like. So, and all of these would be perceived by the customer as sound, as vibration on the floor, on the seats, as vibration on the gear pedal, uh, the steering, etc. So, and this model, uh, after we have a good matrix, this modeling is done. So we can experiment, we can cut off one part and check if, okay, is there a change in the level? So this would help you understand, okay, which part is more important. This is done in, uh, we have many softwares from LMS and other brands. So we can actually simulate by cutting off different parts and trying to understand which part is more important and where we need to focus uh, to create an optimized solution where with minimum effort, we are able to achieve the highest amount of vehicle refinement. And also, let's look into the slide where I discussed about the sources of noise and vibration. So, noise and noise can be broadly class classified into two categories: structure-borne and air-borne, which you'll hear about more often. So, what is structure-borne? So, it is borne by the structure. So it is carried by the structure. It is a vibrating source directly, physically, or mechanically attached structurally attached to the car or whatever system you have. And this, uh, the vibration energy is conveyed by the structure and eventually radiated into the acoustic cavity inside of which you have the observer listening to the vibration. So for example, road noise. So the suspension, the forces on the suspension so let's skip road noise. Uh, let's look into the same example for both these two cases. So let's uh, take the example of the engine. So the engine does not only radiate noise, it also vibrates on the engine mounts. So that vibration travels through the car cabin and creates a noise as well. And you can feel the vibration as well if it is lower in frequency or higher in amplitude. We also have airborne noise, the other one. So where you have the vibration or the acoustic or vibration energy traveling through the fluid medium mostly. It can be transferred by panels, but it's mostly conveyed by the fluid medium as acoustic waves. We should also notice one key insight is, as we go to higher frequencies, the airborne contribution of noise and vibration increases, and the structure bone decreases after 500 hertz. So, the low frequency simulations, uh, including FEA and MBD, are mostly related to the structure bone part. And for airborne, we would need uh, SEA, the statistical energy analysis. But the SEA has limited application because for the higher frequencies, one key piece of knowledge, one key piece of insight into noise and vibration is lower frequencies are very hard to solve. Low frequency problems are very hard to solve. And high frequencies can be solved by adding surface treatments because high frequency waves can be scattered easily, can be absorbed easily, but low frequency waves have very low impedance for normal engineering structures. One example would be, suppose you have a friend who is playing music very loud at the top floor. So notice next time that you won't be able to hear the low frequency tones, the voice of the, you may not be able to listen to the voice of the singer much clearly from a distance, but you'd be able to perceive the beats, the low frequency woofer sound. So it is because that the impedance, the resistance of normal structures at low frequency is very low. And one Great insight would be it is because the wavelengths are too large. So the wavelengths, we can just map the different sources of noise according to the frequencies and come up with a strategy how to keep a, a difference in frequency so that they don't cause resonance issues. So if you have a powertrain mode very close to the 
suspension mode, there could be a coupled effect, a resonance effect, and you'll get very large resonant response, high amplitudes, not good for your NVH quality.